I'm so excited about this. This is a video unlike any I have made before where we get to see the way that a whelp pool moves in a totally new way, super slow motion and clear shots of the whole surface of the weld pool. I'm able to do this with a new weld visualization system for scientific evaluation of welds from Crone Technology, consisting of one of their high-speed cameras, as well as some special LED lights that have a really high brightness. This is just a prototype of the system, and I'll show you a little bit more about how it works at the end of the video. The first welding process we'll look at is TIG welding. TIG welding uses a torch that looks like this and has a pointed electrode. Electricity flows from that to the workpiece to form an arc and you add a filler metal into a molten weld pool. When you're actually welding with TIG, this is pretty close to what you're able to see. If we take a closer look, you can see why cleaning your material is really important. Even the little bit of contamination from this clean material gets drawn right into that weld pool and floats there on the surface. Once a pool is formed, you can add filler metal to it. The point at which you add the filler metal is really important because you want that weld pool to melt it. You can see that filler being pressed in there. This whole dab of filler took just a fraction of a second in reality. As it solidifies, notice how everything will shrink down and it will sink down into a crater left at the end. Now hear that clicking? That is a pulsed TIG weld. It looks like a regular TIG weld, but it's actually alternating between a higher and lower power level as you run the weld. This is pretty common to do to avoid distortion. But if we take a closer look, notice how even though this pulsing happens 30 times every single second, with each pulse you can actually see the weld puddle grow and oscillate. It's amazing to see it drive that. Let's turn it up to 120 times per second. And you can see how much more weld pool motion there is when you do that. All of this welding has been done on steel. Let's move to aluminum and look at some of the interesting things that happen there. When you TIG weld aluminum, we actually use an alternating current. And this etches the surface off of the aluminum. So notice there's a frosty layer right around the outside of the weld. That's where the alternating current is actually etching and cleaning the surface of the aluminum to give clean metal for a sound weld. Let's watch what happens here when we move in closer. When the arc starts, most machines will give a huge rush of current to give a nice crisp start. Notice those flickers that happen on the surface of the material. Each time that flicker happens, it's when the torch is changing to electrode positive, and it's just breaking up some of that surface layer to clean it and expose nice, fresh, bare metal that can have an acceptable weld. Notice how it's breaking it up. Each time it switches to that positive side, so the tungsten electrode is positive, it breaks off a little bit more, and now you can see a puddle start to form in the center. That puddle will grow, and even as it grows, the etching continues out around the weld, and this is what makes welding on aluminum work so well with TIG. It continues to cause that pulsation every time it switches between positive and negative, and that's just a lot of movement in the puddle that you really can't see when you're running a weld. Now this continues even during the welding process when you're adding filler metal. Notice once again it's really important where the filler metal is added to the weld pool so that the puddle itself will melt it and not the heat from the arc. As the weld filler comes off it's a nice chiseled edge. That's a good sign. That etching effect continues to lead the weld and give nice clean aluminum. Watch what happens if you accidentally dip your tungsten electrode down into the filler metal. It only touched here for a fraction of a second, but in that time, it created a lot of contamination right here. That's why it's really important when this happens, if you're welding on something critical, to take the time to clean everything off.
Now let's look at some MIG welding, which uses a gun like this and feeds wire out of the gun and the electric cart goes between the wire and the workpiece, so it's melting all the time as it feeds in there. It works really well and when you're running a MIG weld, through the welding helmet you see something that looks like this as your weld pool fills in. There's actually a lot going on here and we can see a lot of that as we slow it down. Now this particular type of gas metal arc welding is called short circuit transfer. And that's because the wire goes down and it will actually short out and create a short circuit between the welding wire and the workpiece. That's why the arc goes out over and over again. And each time that it does, one of those droplets transfers on. Short circuit MIG is the most common process and it just runs a bit colder because that arc isn't lit all the time. You can see why there's so much spatter and the sparks fly off of there because of how much is going on here with the process and that arc going on and off all the time and running into the molten weld pool. That's also what gives it the signature sound that you get when you're MIG welding where it's not just a hum or a buzz. With short circuit MIG you get that kind of rattly buzzing sound that uh, is, is so indicative of an arc that's running right which is like this. Let's look at one last process. That's shielded metal arc welding or stick welding. Now when you're stick welding, you just manually feed in a rod that's covered with flux and you have an electric arc between the end of that rod and your workpiece to provide the heat. This is what you can see when you're running a stick weld. If we look up closer, however, you can see that electrode on the left side and the weld pool. There's a lot of motion in the weld pool, but the part that's really interesting is over towards the right side of the screen, you can see where the flux off the outside of the electrode actually floats up on top of that weld pool as it solidifies, creating a slag coating that you usually have to chip off. I think it's fascinating to actually see that slag rising up out of the molten weld pool and coating over the solidified part of the weld. There's some really smart engineering in that chemistry. When you weld, there are so many interesting things going on and you can only see a fraction of it when you're looking through a welding hood or with clips from a traditional camera. Well, this is a setup that was specifically designed to be able to see that underlying physics and the things you don't normally see with a weld pool. So what this is, is a high-speed camera I was able to borrow to take a few clips and give some feedback on a new system that was developed. And it filters out all the light from the welding arc and only accepts the wavelength of light that comes out of these lights right here so that you can get a clear view of the whole weld pool and see exactly what's going on. On top of that, it can film at 1,000 frames per second or even higher if you reduce the resolution so you can see the fluid motion and some really cool stuff. Thank you all for tuning in and sticking with me throughout this video and a huge thanks to Crone Technology for letting me borrow this camera to be able to produce this footage and share it out there with the world. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below or leaving me a comment and we'll see you next time.